Hello, welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to Data Programming using Scala. In this video, we're going to do another example using regular expressions. Uh, we're going to look at parsing a polynomial. Um, this example is actually kind of born from a problem that was used in an ACM regional programming competition, uh, and they gave you regular, they gave you uh, polynomials in a text form, and you had to do some operations with them, but in order to do that, the first thing that you had to do was to get them into a form other than the simple text. So let's go ahead and let's create a new, um, I'm just going to go with the Scala object, I'm going to put a main in here, give us something that we can run, and we'll call this regex poly. Not ploy, poly. We'll see how many times I do that typo today. Okay, so first let's talk about the format of what we're getting here. Uh, we are going to get strings and they might look something like 3x to the 2 minus 5x plus 4. Okay. The general format is if the power is greater than, and so you have x raised to some power, it can be z 1 or 0. If it's 1 or 0, there's, so if it's 0, there's no x at all. If it's 1, there's no caret. If it's bigger than 1, there's a caret. The coefficient in front may or may not be there, with the exception here. Uh, so this could also be uh, x cubed plus that, or this could be minus x to the fourth minus. Okay, so note that there is, you know, there are lots of possibilities here, and that's why the the regular expression potentially makes this easier. And what I want to do is I want to parse these into a case class called a term as a coefficient that's an int and uh, the power that we're raising x to, that's also an int. And so what I just want to do here is I want to build this regular expression uh, that can parse this for us. And literally what it's supposed to do is it is supposed to match one term at a time. Okay. Uh, so val poly reg x equals, okay, we're going to make a, um, a regular expression here using our raw string. So we start off, there can be a plus or a minus, but not, uh, <clears throat> not both, and it's optional. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to allow the situation where we do plus, minus, like that. Um, that was not part of the allowed inputs for, for this problem and I generally will tend to agree with that. If there's a minus coefficient, uh, if there's a negative coefficient, it'll just be minus that term. So, we need to start, there could be a plus or a minus, but it is optional, and the reason it's optional is because if the first term is positive, there is neither a plus nor a minus there. Second, uh, after that, we have a the coefficient, which once again might not be there. So backslash d star. Then we have an x, or maybe we don't have an x. And this is one of these places where it turns out there is nothing in this format that you're guaranteed to have. You're not guaranteed to have the caret, you're not guaranteed to have the x, you're not guaranteed to have the coefficient in front either. So nothing is required. And if I build a single regular expression that does this, uh, is just you know, one thing with, with stars and question marks, it will have the ability to match the empty string, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and put in here an alternative. Okay. So the, the thing to the left side of my pipe, my or, is going to be all possibilities that include 
the x. And the thing that's on the right side is the one case here that does not include the x. That way I can actually put an x on the regular expression here and not have a question mark. If I tried to, to blend these together, this x has a question mark too, in which case you can have nothing here, nothing here, nothing for the x, and then nothing for what's about to follow. I'm going to put in a set of parentheses. I've actually been avoiding parentheses. We're going to have to put in a lot more parentheses here for, for capture groups. Uh, but I first want to kind of build this regular expression, and we can do a little test to make sure that it works, and then we'll have to try to pull the data out of it. So uh, next is something that's optional in that I have a caret followed by one or more digits. And as I said, that's optional. Uh, if you have the caret, you definitely have at least one digit after it. Um, and that gives you your the, the power that you're raising to. And so what would be nice to do here, in fact, we can cut that and paste it here. Val poly equals that. For s in poly regex dot find all in poly. Um, quick note, in the previous video, I had been search. I, the API tells us that there is a method in here called find all match in, and it's not popping up. Uh, realize that the reason for this is because I'm using 2.9 and the regex is the most recent version of Scala, which right now is 2.10. So if you happen to have 2.10 installed on your Eclipse, you will have a find all match in. I'll show you in just a minute how we can get around that in, in 2.9. So I just want to run this where I print out the things that are matched and make sure that we find all of the terms appropriately. So I hit run. And here we go. Uh, well, that's not quite what I wanted. X caret four. Oh, I know why. Um, let's see, caret is a special. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, caret is special. Uh, everything that is used in building your regular expressions has you know is kind of a special character and you need to escape them and so the caret is definitely a special character because it is used to denote the uh, either the not when it's inside of a character class or it's used to denote that you're matching at the beginning of a string um, so we have to escape it so I got x to the four minus x to the three plus three x raised to the two minus five x and four which are exactly the terms that I wanted. <clears throat> so at least on this little test, my regular expression here is finding what I want. Now, I want to be able to pull the values out of here so that what I can do is put a val up there. Instead of just printing these things, I want to yield the appropriate terms and then I want to print out those terms to make sure that they are that they're appropriate. So I should get one and four minus one and three, three and two minus five and one, four and zero. Uh, should be my coefficients and powers when we when we print this out. So this is supposed to do a new, or I'm just it's a case class, so I don't need the new of something in here. Coef comma power val coef equals, well just to make this compile I could do that and now I get a whole bunch of one ones which of course is not the answer that I want. Okay, so how am I going to, I have matches here, this gave me back strings but I can use a regular expression to pull things apart. Using 2.9 
turns out that this gives us back what's called a match iterator. And the match iterator has a method in it called match data, which gives you an iterator of matches. So instead of in 2.9, instead of calling all the find all match in, you call, you call find all in and then call match data on that. Um, it's a little extra step. But now that gives us back an iterator over these, this match type. And the match type has inside of it things that will give you back information for groups. So this is where we're going to start inserting some more parentheses and we're going to build groups around all the things that we want to be able to, to find. So for example, I want that to be one group. Okay, This is the coefficient at the front. Whatever this matches, I should be able to uh, well, so that's a possibility for the coefficient at the front. That's a possibility for the coefficient at the front. Um, and so if I have an x in the expression, this will be, you know, it could be, well, it could be a blank here. It could be a minus sign here. Uh, actually, there's a part of me that almost feels, oh, hey, look at this. I probably need plus minus. Boom. If I had made this four a minus sign, we would have dropped out the minus previously. Um, okay, so so that's going to the constant part will either wind up being located in that group or in that group. The x it turns out I don't need to capture uh, because which group has values in it tells me whether or not there's an x. I also don't really care about the caret because it's either there or it's not. So I want uh, to just have a capture group around this. Now remember, our capture groups start numbering at one and they are numbered by the location of the open parentheses. So one, two, three, four. So total four capture groups. The power is actually fairly easy here. It would be s dot group of three with one exception, uh, or actually I guess um, two possible exceptions, yeah. So everything will have it if it is a two or larger. The groups, if nothing was matched, come out as null. So both of these last terms will have the group be null. I think what I'm going to do here is change this up a little bit. Coef comma power equals and I want to break this into two broad categories. One is the category where s dot group of four is null. Okay. Home, close, else. Open. Okay. So if s dot group, and it's unhappy with me because I'm not returning a, a tuple yet. If four is null, that means that this didn't match and I have an x. Okay. In the case where I don't have an x, this is actually the easier case. If I don't have an x, I want the coefficient uh, to be equal to s dot group of four dot two int. And then the polynomial or the power that I'm raising to is zero. That's the easy case. Okay. What about the other case? Well, in the other case, my possibilities, I have, I have lots of possibilities for what can go inside of here, but I know that the power is going to be at least one and I'm going to have some coefficient in here. Uh, you know, there's a part of me. Well, I would redo my numbers. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so, val p equals. I'm going to deal with just this part here. So it turns out that if s dot group of 
three, once again, one, two, three. If it's null, then I want this to be uh, to be one. Okay, that would be the case for like right here. There was no caret on this one. Else, it's s dot group of three dot two int. Okay, and my tuple I'm going to return c comma p. So what is this val c? Well, um, it's the coefficient. Once again, there are quite a few possibilities here. If s dot group of one is null, well, that means that there was nothing at all uh, for the coefficient. It would be like here. Um, the x was the first thing that was there, in which case the coefficient is a positive one. Else, if s dot group of one, so it's not null. Other possibilities that aren't pure ints, so this one would give us negative five. Okay, I can do a two int on that. This one gives us plus three. I can call two int on that. This one gives us a minus sign. Hmm, I can't call two int on that. So in this case, if all I get is a minus sign, I want that else s dot group of one dot two int. Okay, and I believe that covers all of our bases. Let's run this. <laughs> exception in thread main. Maybe it doesn't. No pointer exception. No nope. number format exception for the empty string. Oh, indeed. Uh, Oh, okay, so it's not coming out as null, it's coming out as empty string. I can fix that easily enough. I had thought I got nulls, but apparently I don't, which is good because we should avoid nulls. Now, where do we have oh, number format exception on null? Oh, so we can get either one. Oh, that was not the thing I wanted to click on. I want to click on this one. Group four dot two end. One, two, three, four. Now if it, this should be if it's not equal to empty string. I go there. Okay, we're gonna have to do, so it actually found one, four, just fine. It found minus one, three, just fine. It found three, two, just fine. And then it ran into a null here, and the null occurred on this line. So is this a situation where group three is winding up being no. Yeah, now it found the five one, and now actually, I think I might be. I'm going to go back to nulls, but I had this as an equal equal instead of a not equal. No, I'm getting number format exceptions. Okay. On null. Line 19. I want to put in a little print line here. Print line. S dot group of one. Oops, one. Plus S dot group of two. Plus. Uh, I don't actually need two. I only use three and s dot group of four. <clears throat> Let's see what all of our groups are coming out as. Four and null. Okay, so that's, oh and there's 
let's put commas in here so that you can see things. When things are empty strings, they, the print statements kind of hide that from us. All right, so we can get empty strings or nulls. Uh, so group one is coming off as empty string. Group three is coming up as the four. Okay, I like that. Um, ah, that there's the problem. Group one, in this case, is not null, it is empty string. Because we recognize this side, but it, it didn't pull any characters. Uh, the null happens, for example, on this or, if we match the first thing on the or, the second thing is gonna be null, and vice versa. Whereas, when we match this side here, the fact that this just winds up matching on, on the empty string, and there's there's our, our difference for how those two are coming out in this case. Okay, so what is happening here? We find empty string uh, four and null, and we do a check here, group four, if it's not equal to null, we do this. No, this should have been an equal equal. If it is equal to null, we do that. Otherwise, we go to the other option. And now it doesn't crash at all. And, well, I have these extra printouts in here. One, four, minus one, three, three, two, minus five, one, and four, zero. Okay, and there you go. So if I run that again without our extra printouts, there are the five terms that we have, one, two, three, four, five, inside of there. So this was an example of using a regular expression to parse a polynomial and using the groups to pull things out, using the find all in and the match data uh, to give us the match objects we can use as groups. Typically, the way this works, if you are pulling multiple things out of a single string, a single line, you're gonna use something like find all in. If you are pulling multiple lines through, for example, a source and you've called get lines, you'll probably use the pattern match on there instead. But that's it for this video, and we'll come back next time and talk about our parsers.